Uh, how many of you are artists? Okay, I give this an idea of what to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to try to do your background. <laughs> are you ducking Which from the light? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to look out at the audience and We're gonna move the, the light below. So it won't be your eyes. Yeah, but Thank we'd you. like to see who's talking, who's out there. Turn it on. Let's turn it off for now. And and if we will call for it later, okay? Yeah, all right. You started in this field when? In the pinup field. Can you remember? <laughs> Parts of uh, pinup, erotica, uh, fantasy, burlesque, so uh, at various times for the last 40 years. Yeah, but you got into it, nobody else was doing it, right? In the mid 70s, I started working for the sex magazines. Right. So I, you know, I was trying to figure out how to get out of waitressing in New York City, <laughs> in the village. And I was in the fine art world, and I could see that it was going to be a long life of waiting tables with people I was showing with. And it was, the women just didn't get, uh, you just couldn't get uh, shows. It was hard to get uh, representation back. And so I thought, since I always drew women, somehow I made a quick portfolio and, and uh, went to the sex magazines because actually there was not much, there was a lot of bad talent there. Creativity that had erotic. 
the erotic, almost like anything, anything was uh, erotic, and they put it all in their uh, illustrations, and it was so much fun. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, at that time, I remember doing illustrations, and said, well, I could put anything in there, and somebody would have a fetish for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that being true. Yeah, there weren't, uh, yeah, it was a, uh, there weren't too many women doing I can't no, think of too many no. women doing this. And I thought it was temporary. I thought I was going to go back to doing fine art, and I just never did. You were a minimalist. As I was a minimalist. minimalist. What does that mean? Exactly? Minimalist is less is, less is more type of, uh, of, um, type of artwork that was very popular in New York City. Um, uh, art world in around uh, 19, from the 1950s to I think it went out of favor in the 80s. But um, I had a boyfriend, and when I moved in with him in Soho, he was doing minimalist painting. Uh, we were working in the same space. And, uh, and I got into this, this crazy fine art world, which was, you know, Soho at the beginning, uh, which was pretty, pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. You know, it was all artists, and everybody was working on something. Everybody was a rebel. Everybody was a rebel. Yeah, right. They yeah. were doing all kinds. It was also hippie years, um, oh. a, a lot of uh, demonstrations. It was just a very um, hmm. unusual years, revolutionary years. Yeah. And social, feminism, racial, all kinds of. Yeah, it was a mix. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I went in and out that time. Were you in New York City? Well, they, I went back uh, off and on working in the film industry. So went to the factory, the Warhol oh, factory. Did you go to the Warhol's factory? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, what did you see? Another guy that told me fuck. My favorite magazine. Was it? Yeah. Be a rebel, and uh, <laughs> some of it was genuine, like yourself, which is uh, kind of unique anyway. Now, when you were in art school, you had said just the other day that nobody taught you drawing. Well, um, I think the, the most formal education I had is my, my uh, father hired a uh, soldier buddy of his to teach me how to mix oils, and I was like 13. When I went to visual arts, visual arts was really, uh, at that time, just a very wild art school where the teacher was, they were trying all kinds of new things where like, uh, you bring in oil paints and the brush and then you say, well, teacher, how do I use these things? And they said, well, just mix them together and get them on the canvas. They wouldn't tell you anything. <laughs> and then it was just experimental teaching. They were going to do it without braids, and everybody was doing. It was just so loose. There was no structure, no teaching. No None. teaching. Yeah. yeah. So you've taught yourself to draw. Um. Yeah. I've always drawn women. Yeah. Hmm. Do you work with live models or photos, or just within your mind? No, I'm not too good with with live models. I did that in uh, at visual arts, uh, and that was that was great. That's a whole different discipline. But you know, to have uh, live models in your New York apartment, you know. <laughs> I remember uh, sketching old boyfriends, <laughs> taking a little trip with them, and <laughs> you know, taking the covers off and what you know, drawing them. You know? You, you work from photographs. Photographs. So what I used to do when I first started is I couldn't afford models. I couldn't afford to. I wasn't taking photographs since I would, since I was doing erotica. I would take all the magazines and I start tearing them apart, and gluing bodies together, and they were some sort of Frankenstein hmm. <laughs> then draw. creatures and draw yeah. them and yeah. recreate them. You know, Do you project them or you just draw? Um, at the time, I used to draw them, and it was just, it was difficult because I always would draw them the wrong size. I think I didn't get an opaque projector, which my husband got. You could see I was 
going through a lot trying to get them the right size. Um, I think in 79 he got me that, and uh, all of a sudden, it, you know, it became so much easier to, to put things to together. Them together. Yeah. yeah, and the airbrush, I didn't get an a, a passion B until about 1980, and that helped too, but, you know, just yeah. uh, most of my work is, is hand work, and uh, the, the airbrush until Playboy was minimal. Hmm. To, today you, you do an almost, um, not a cartoon, it's a drawing, but it's so free and open, like a birthday card you sent me, it's just eloquent, and I said, well, how did she get that from a photograph? I mean, it's the lightness and everything is there, but you just... Well, that was, when I was started working for Playboy, my, what kept me excited about doing pinup was to actually hmm. develop a character, which is what I was trying to do, and simplifying. And it's really a challenge to you take the photograph and you know and you know. You take you see what sparks your interest and then you try to start changing it. And you try to do you, the line is so important. It, for me it's about a line. Because it's all there. Yeah. It's very simple. You don't need to see everything. You, know. you need to start pulling away. And sometimes you pull away too much, you exaggerate too much, you make a mistake, you just got to keep going on. Something yeah. really hit and some big misses. And you work on watercolor kind of paper? Um, you know, I used to work on Strathmore, but the paper companies are having such a hard mm. time these days trying to, to stay alive. Strathmore stopped making what I was used to, and it really messed me up. You know, yeah. uh, I was working on hot press Strathmore, or kid finished Strathmore oh, illustration board. The heavy. Very heavy, yeah. 350 Just pounds. like an yeah. illustration board. And um, now I'm working on uh, Lamparel um, uh, hot press uh, paper. Watercolor paper. Very heavy. Very heavy. And the, the, but those are the gouache pieces, um, which I'm trying to get looser again. Yeah. You know, for me, it's always a challenge of lines and expressions and how much to mm. keep in and how to do something different. And so I'm going to a new uh, um, period of my, my work. So I'm trying to go somewhere. I'm never sure where I'm going. I just you know I keep working and hoping I get there. Because so. the burlesque series is very loose, very simple, very but loose. all there. But there's something about burlesque that should seem down and dirty. Yeah. It should yeah. never be so slick. It's and so you're looking seems, for that aspect. I'm looking. Actually, I feel like it's still too clean. It's got to feel like you're. You want to get nasty. You got like, nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever go to burlesque shows? I've, well, I've been to the Dito. I haven't. I know you. I think I went with you when Dita first was starting. Uh, and oh, was that the first one? No, I don't know. know. We went to before then, but not many. It wasn't around the, the 60s only, and 70s. The only genuine burlesque was Tempest Storm. Tem and and we yeah. saw Tempest, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And she was like 75. Mm -hmm. Great. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, in my area, you went to the downtown Broadway stinky theaters with rotten seats and so <laughs> then the lights would come on and this jewel of a woman would come out in the middle of that guy sitting in the front row with the raincoats on and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did have a very funky side anyway. Mm -hmm. fun. You're looking for that that feel. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I love it from a woman. That's a whole different well, there are women on stage. Yes, they know right. they, they, yeah. they're manipulating. It's their show. They're, 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 they, uh, they, you know. they would talk back to the audience. You know. I've they always been fascinated by audience. them. Yeah, that's great. We've got uh, any particular questions from the audience? Olivia, and Jim, I'd like to hear from you on this also. Talk about what made Betty Page such a, such a great subject. Well, I, I, Betty Page, 
appeared nude in magazines in 1951, Modern Man magazine. And I'm a 40s boy. We spent our youth trying to look, find a nude woman someplace. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, a, it was great. And of course, she was absolutely gorgeous. She just had a beautiful, beautiful figure. It was considered trash at the time. I wasn't aware of the fetish things that she did. But uh, why did you do it? <laughs> I come from a different uh, vantage point. Yeah, As sure. a woman, um, uh, for when I saw the Betty Page, and I was looking at Betty Page photographs because of Jeff Lund. He yeah. was putting out the books on Private Peak, so I had access to a lot of her photographs. It was her joy, her I think she was having a private party in there. She was clearly somewhere else. Having was fun. Yeah. Having fun. She yeah. wasn't in those bondage. I mean, she just was elsewhere. And um, I, I think that she was just an unusual woman that I associated with, with sexual freedom. So she has a different meaning to women, I think. And, and I understand your and, and uh, Dave different. Stevens, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a very different vantage point for me. She was uh, an alternate sexual, uh, yeah. she just offered a whole different world, a, a viewpoint. Yeah, I discovered that when I did the second book on Betty. Because I did, the first book was mainly about a Jaeger photo, it was beautiful, yeah, particularly yeah. male point of view. Uh, but I used only amateur photos in the second book. Her posing, you know, on a carpet, on the dining room table, against a light plug, it, 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 this the most ordinary kind, of, and having the time of her life. And the fans were young women. Oh, really? Yeah, the that. ones that came up and loved that book better than the first book. Oh. Because this, oh, in I a see. way, is the real Betty. Yeah. This is a, a, a rebel without ever thinking about it. And but we also see something of ourselves in it. You yes. know, right. In the 60s and you know, early, it, it, it was not acceptable for women to even be looking at pictures of women, let alone drawing them or relating to them. And so, with, you know, there's been so much that went on in the 60s and 70s, the sexual revolution, all different types of changes, that she really represented something to a lot of women. When I had shows, all of a sudden, women started showing up with the hair. Yeah. And all, it was all, it was getting into popular culture. And then she started meeting something of a rebel. Yeah. Yeah, it was an interesting to watch, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. It was, yeah. it was surprising, yeah. to say the least. I got mad at Dave Stevens when he put, well, <laughs> well, I picked up the Rocketeer. I didn't know who Dave was. I mean, yeah. this is a young woman I've been drawing since 1951. He had the brains to put her in a comic book, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I met Dave, and he came out again, I was jealous. How dare so, you? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> She's right. Yeah. Well, she loves me. me. Anybody else? I've been really lucky to have so many different great models, and they're wild women. I, I mean, when I'm doing uh, paintings of these, their their personalities are so distinct. Say like uh, a Julie Strain, she's. Uh, She's just a, this crazy sci-fi lady, a six-foot-two woman, and so I always wound up doing the, these uh, uh, crazy fantasy pieces of her. She just inspired within me certain directions, whereas like um, oh, Dita, I mean, you know, Dita has her own genre. I mean, you know, for less. And I love that about her. I mean, they're, they're all such individual. Every woman has their own uh, niche. And you know, when, when I'm painting and I'm, I'm just collaborating with them, you know, I try to figure out what it is about them that they want to see in my works. 
sometimes I go elsewhere. I remember I made one of my models who was a playmate into a Martian with, with aliens crawling out of her nipples. I don't think she saw that. Sometimes I go somewhere else. But, you know, I've, been real, I've had uh, Mar Margaret Cho, I've had uh, hmm. Pamela Anderson, uh, Courtney Love. I mean, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're just all kinds of... Oh, there's always that, but you know, the, the, the famous women you can't touch because there's always uh, copyright danger, danger you go and say, well, why aren't you paying her? Well, I would, <laughs> if I could. That's yeah. yeah, you can't. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So, um, there, there's... Well, I'm assuming, I mean, she was a fantasy. She was so much fun. She was... Uh, uh, Shonda uh, background, yeah. Uh, yeah that's focus a focus Brilliant. Joel, I mean, try a larger image. A focus eye, or, uh, you know, I was so fascinated with yeah. Shonda. Shonda, yeah. when I see the Shonda paintings, uh, uh, which was, um, does everybody know what Shonda is? It's Japanese uh, woodblock prints from the 1890s or the 1850s and it affected us in modern art. I mean, it simplified passion yeah. into a couple of lines, a little yeah, couple just, of lines, yeah. a little bite of a lip. Yeah. Passion, huge in <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's the ultimate draftsman. Oh my know. God! Yeah. The power, the yeah. power of a few lines, and I think that it really influenced Western art. I see like Picasso arms and everyone's all like, oh that, my that, god, yeah. could it be? Yeah. <laughs> he had that in his... In you his see a guy that said when he was 75, he said, by the time I'm 95, I'll be able to, you know, draw waves and figure And when I'm 125, I'll finally be able to draw, you know. <laughs> 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 He's a master. Any other questions? Yeah, right here. Uh, how did you translate your love into commercial success. Commercial success? Yeah. Oh, there's where my husband comes in. <laughs> he has, and we've worked together. He's put out. Uh, you have to, you have to network, and you have to, to get product out there. I think we don't put out uh, cards to promote me, and uh, and I think. The books are the biggest thing. I think you don't, that, that's what really puts you on it. Joel put together a book in 92, 92 yeah. of all the work in it. And, uh, and I think the books are really put you, put you yeah. on, this, on the map. Get you out there. Get yeah. you out there, getting out there. But when you started in the magazines, was it more oh. like you seeking an outlet or were they finding your work and then contacting you? Oh, no. I mean, I was just. Well, when I went into the, the first magazine, and I had just a couple of drawings, and they said, well, do you know how to do this and this and this? And I said, yes. And then I went home, and I didn't know how to do any of it. I was just, no, just, no, no, no. just kidding. I said, well, I'm making this up now. And, and, so, and so I would, uh, for the first time in my life, during those years, I got hungry to get somewhere. So somehow I wound up pounding the pavement in New York City trying to get jobs so I could keep on drawing. It was just a weird time in my life. Before that, it was just on a horrible... Were you trying to do galleries? That? Before that, my life was just uh, a train wreck. We won't talk about that. Oh, that. It, just, it just, I couldn't focus. And I, I think I, I was looking for uh, my, my answer to uh, to complete my life was to um, make my companion, my male companion, into a work of art. So, so you know, I mean, that, you know, just to, uh, just my focus became on me and not them. Not and it them. changed my life because all of a sudden I became hungry. And you had your own career and your own 
Yeah, well, when I became selfish, all of them said, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to stop. Do you remember what they paid you for an illustration? A hundred dollars, you know. You, you were lucky, I got 50. You got 50. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got well, only a couple that, magazines yeah. on the West Coast, so you had Adam and uh, Caper. I don't know. Do you know those magazines? I do know those magazines. Yeah, and it was 50 <laughs> bucks. I was lucky to get 50 bucks. In Canada, it was like $25. Big Jones gave you a lot. <laughs> it was, a chance, it was a chance to draw. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Ah, uh, yes, for Olivia, since you've worked in various media, could you talk a little bit about what are some of the rewards and challenges of working in airbrush as opposed to gouache or whatever for a particular uh, subject or theme or whatever? When I first started, there were small, small paintings and they were in oils. And that's because that's what I only knew. And uh, then I went to watercolors because I was trying to find uh, the Vargas, uh, was trying to use that, and that was really difficult to do, reading a Vargas. And just over the years, I've just developed a whole lot of techniques. Um, I've really been stumbling through a lot of my career, learning. Learning that. Yeah, putting it all together. Well, well, what I meant was like if you had a particular idea for a particular painting you were going to do, do you think very much in terms of like, well, this would work better as an airbrush or would it work in gouache or do you just yeah. kind of just go with whatever feels right, I guess is what my question I mean, was. Yes, both answers. I mean, whatever hmm. feels right, it, of course, is going to affect you know, uh, what medium you're going to do. And, um, <laughs> I decide on each piece. Uh, I think right now I'm thinking of going to a tour to see what that is. Because I want to get into more backgrounds. Again, because I'm uh, winding down on Playboy, I want to do other other work. What are the Playboy done in? Yeah, really? Playboy are done in watercolors and, and you know, the Transparent and, watercolors. Yeah. yeah, and and Heff hmm. really had you know he wanted to stay with the, the petty love, so yeah. I, you know anytime I veered from that, Comment. I didn't like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it started to really become to push it. Yeah. No, it's not all that. It's just this limiting. You know, it's always the, the blonde, blue-eyed, Lord. I mean, it's, it's not the woman you're interested in. Same, yeah. yeah, you know, after a while you. It's not funky. I don't want to leave. And on top of that, he's writing the captions. We've got females supplying the the artwork and a male head coming in. Uh -huh. You know, it's just it's different. it's on the head. It's different. Conflict. But it but to have that spot in Playboy yeah, was it's really a big. throne for me. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. And I loved him. So yeah. Yeah. Can't complain. I'm just curious about what it was like working as a female or in your early in your career and the fact that you have a very male dominated industry? I didn't have any trouble when I walked into these magazines. Everybody treated me very professionally. The only funny one I had when I walked into Playboy is that I walked into Harvey Kurtzman. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Kurtzman? Harvey Kurtzman. Oh yeah. Oh, you knew him, right? Yeah. And he jumped across the desk. <laughs> jumped, he saw my portfolio and then he jumped over the desk and he was right there in front of the desk. Uh, that was the only person that headed for me. I mean, it didn't do anything, it just shocked me. It just shocked me. But no, I was treated really well. Yes, I Josephine Baker, I started painting probably in the 80s. And were there any others that I... I can't hear... Um, you mean uh, at the era of Josephine Baker or Gia? Uh, actually, I can't... I can't think of it. Of Doreen Betty's era, do you know any African-American women that were were popular like in, well, in, during the 50s all the way? Well, just... Not really. well, that's Danbridge. 
But then Robert Bain came along, and he was he had shows. So then I thought, well, I'm gonna have. I want to just start painting women uh, in a different way. So then that opened up a door. So it's what's offered you. Luck has a lot to do with it. You have to make your own luck, but his love. Yeah. yeah, you know, wow. things occur. Yeah, things occur, and then yeah, you have to either go down, right, right, yeah, right. you know, say, oh, they'll do this for a while. Let me see. I mean, I mean, you didn't, didn't. Well, pin up wasn't what. I moved. Right. More, you stayed in the art field. I went all over the place. And whatever opened up. It all interested you. I wanted yeah. to do a magazine, an adventure magazine. Uh, men's stories, high adventure, hire all the great illustrators and all the writers. I didn't know there was no market for it, we were all dying. <laughs> but in the process, I learned you could get movie photos for free. And so I did a movie magazine. Hmm. And that made my career in the film industry. <laughs> you, you just take what comes and you better run fast. You know? <laughs> That's it. But yeah. I discovered your work in the 90s with the sci-fi work. I had a print of the woman in a silver jumpsuit with a panther, and I was... Oh, man, it's from the 80s, yeah. Was that from the 80s? Yeah. Because okay. um, I came across it then, and I was, I was really impressed with the, with the precision and the detail. So I'm, I'm curious now that you're exploring new styles, and you talked about doing burlesque and making it feel a little looser or rougher. How do you, how do you go from such precision to loosening it up? What's, how do you get yourself well, into that mode? That painting you talked about was influenced by Sorian, who I love. He's a good friend, and it was heavily influenced by him. Definitely cannot do metal. So that that was an attempt and a failure at, at doing this kind of metal. Um, I think that what happens after so many years of doing precise work. I feel it's not important. Hmm. I feel like th this is just me, and I know that this type of uh, being at, in comic, in the comic world, everyone feels that that drawing, showing your drawing chops is is very important. But me, I think I have a more abstract. I, I want to get the feeling. I want to. I want to simplify it, maybe in color and, and feeling and. It doesn't have to have everything in there. It doesn't have to be all seen clearly. As long as you get the spirit and the feeling of it. So I hope that's where I'm going. Did I answer that? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I think um, it's, I, I could see how it, it might be a bit of a technical challenge in having the skill around this precision and trying to loosen that up, trying to get like the the work that's showing now. Oh um, yeah, I love doing that. I have no market for that. Hmm. That's why that dies. Oh. There's a lot of things that I do that just you know, you know, you go certain directions and you're like, oh, yeah. 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 where am I where am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you push it out there and then but I love it. She has some don't laugh. So they have <laughs> A lot of power to me when that kind of beauty and the looseness, accidental watercolor. I love doing that, and maybe that is sort of where I died. That's actually an old piece. But you've been able to simplify it, but never lose the sensuality and the luxurious of the drawing. So you're looking for the element. I am. I'm also very, I, I feel like I'm also, I just, I can't be subtle. I'm just, I mean, subtlety is something I haven't learned how to do, so I'm going to so why do I have this? I keep putting everything in. Yeah. Or I get insecure, still get insecure, and I start putting more stuff in. I have beaten so many things to death. Yeah. And that's what I like about studies, because sometimes the studies have, the, oh, they have the, hmm. the immediacy, and this is what I had in mind before I went in there and tensed up and started getting this. This is such a game. There's such a game to, to doing, a mental game to being an artist. Yeah, you know, playing with your own mind. Yeah, and, and, 
and, and if you if, if fear, you can see. Yeah. You can see the fear. Yeah. It's constant dealing with fear, fear of a lot of different fears, fears of aging, fears of not being connected, all kinds of things come in. You were, I'm sorry. I was, today was the first time that I've seen your book for less pieces, the originals, and they're, I mean, they're stunning. But I was surprised to see the metallic, like mica, almost like glitter. Oh, it, that's for me. That's for you. That's <laughs> for me. I have to dance to myself. That's saying you know, I'm, I'm a girl. I don't have much time. I don't <laughs> spend a lot of time on myself. I don't, don't shop. I, so what I wind up doing is putting the glitter on the right? Is that the, is that the only series that you do? That no, I've been doing it for a long time. And do you add it to your paint, or are you? Sometimes I have uh, uh, iron oxide. Uh, um, acrylic, and sometimes I put gold or silver. Yeah, I, I, I also fantasize about having um, gold threads on my skin, you know, it would yeah. be nice. Yeah, yeah just yeah. You, I have to do it. I right have my own light, I have you know, all these things, you know, it's fun. You work on a, that heavy paper, doesn't it? Roll up on you. Yeah, have a few pieces like that. Yeah, and you turn it around and t no. <laughs> wrestle with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's wrestling. Okay, yeah. okay. the original. I have a big one at home that, uh, that just keeps curling up, and I have to hmm. fight with it. It's not going well. You want to tell them about the elephant? Oh, I'm doing a challenge. <laughs> I'm laughing. I, I do it a charity for the to, uh, called the Elephant Parade, and. Um, it, if you remember the cows that they used to decorate and, and uh, around the, the country, they would give them to artists and they would paint them. Well, I'm doing an elephant. I'm painting um, actually a Diamantese elephant with pink mm -hmm. elephants around it, feathers, and, and it'll be auctioned off. It's like five feet. Five feet. Huge. Uh, she killed me. <laughs> was it porcelain elephant or something? I think it's fiberglass. Like a big fiberglass elephant. Yeah. And so, in a couple months, they'll uh, they'll downtown. Well, you get the little one. Is that the little one's beautiful. Fun. How do you manage that? It's a miniature. <laughs> now, now it's big. So. I torture my husband because he's been with me 34 years, and he's and it's amazing how much he puts it. Goes through with it. So, what artists do you, Jim, and Olivia admire? What artists do you admire? What artists do we admire? Yeah, so hmm. Can't imagine now. Yeah, there, people ask that all the time, and there's this yeah. tons of them. You know, we, I guess we just like to look at. Good thing. So many things like eating just yeah. one thing your yeah. entire life. You gotta look at and taste everything. There's so many influences. I could yeah. I could narrow it down to one influence. Can you? Yeah. No, it's uh, yeah. you know I started with Milton Kinnett hmm. drawing you know as yeah. a kid and uh, the Ameri I love all the American illustrators. That was my probably my biggest influence from Howard Pyle to Big Mom Harvey Dunn. Line that her Rockwell and Fawcett and Parker would go on the other list, and all of them. And then, of course, the, I guess the, the finance, Edgar Degas is my favorite. And I look, but I love the little crack. It was really a character. Oh, the yeah, oh, it's a, the, they're all so different. Yeah. The the so and then, of course, Hokusai. Yeah, no, we could go on forever of all disciplines, from the fine art down to the all the down. All of them. That was insane. Uh, like yeah, pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anybody else? Besides, what other um, uh, pin up cheesecake artists, contemporary that you think of, that was behind me like? Well, I discovered him and then he was sitting here. I was like, Whoa. Besides the two of you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, contemporary. You know, there's a lot of women that are that are working right right now, which which I'm really happy to see. Um, I don't want to start naming names because it, <laughs> but there are a lot of them, and I was really uh, thrilled to see that they're there. And, and there's a lot of comic, you know, they, they kind of 
overshadow each other, the comic book girls. You mean the cheesecake is in the comic books of fantasy. So there's a lot more ladies out there now than there ever been. Well, I like Adam Hughes, Dave Steele. Contemporary though. What's contemporary? Yes. Well, I mean, now is supposed to be Barkas. What? Which decade is contemporary? Yeah, we said it. Right now, Liking and being influenced by a contemporary pinup artist. So you're you're coming from a, such a different yeah. because they're all for the money set for the way most are they're all men. Uh, can't be sure. Well I'm not saying it influenced I would just move uh artists in the definitely what she's seen I I like a lot a lot of them, but I'm not influenced by them. All my influences in the piano world come from the you know, Enoch Falls, the St. Vargas, Elfrin, you know. Uh, Zoe Mozart, I was not crazy about her. You weren't? No. No. Or Moran. No, I didn't want to. No. Didn't like no. Any yeah. Falls? Love Enoch Falls. Love Enoch Falls. And Elfrin. But see, Elbert does the same girl essentially he, all, yeah. all the time. You're more interested in the individuals. I'm thing. very different, but Elbert was brilliant at bad. creating a character. I mean, that, and Edie Bowles had his own character. Petty had his own character. Right. It's really amazing that, that, the, the, that everybody, uh, my favorites that, that are, they, they reduce the female form to their character. Actually, I think Monroe did the same thing, Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. But she had a character, and that's, you know, when you simplify the female form, Maybe. exaggerate it, uh, and that was their brilliance. Yeah, she developed it. She worked okay. on the wall, right. she trained the wall. And she could turn it on, Yeah. and it, and it eventually overwhelmed her, took her, took her yeah. down. Took yeah. her down. Too much uh, and I know you like at least like Ralph Armstrong's signature. Oh. <laughs> He's not one of my favorites. It's not your yeah, favorite. I don't feel I don't feel connected to his women. Yeah. 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 yeah, I like his college humor heads. Those I don't know those. Maybe yeah, that's they're, why. they're gorgeous, but the, the figures are very strange. Yeah. Is there a typical time it takes you start to finish to a piece. It's a mental game, like I said. If I break down in the middle of it, <laughs> then mm. I uh, sometimes something happens so quickly and it's magic. Or it, and that's rare, but once you get that feeling, it's an opiate. When something happens in a couple of days, and you get and you keep remembering what that that's felt that's like. Great. So, Eva, that was great. Let's do it again. And it rarely happens. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Right? Doesn't always, always happen. So, you, 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 so every time you sit down at a piece, you're hopeful. Yeah. Here we go. Max Max Well, I think he's brilliant. Parish. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. No, you won't get a little bit of him. Fantasy world. Strange life. He's got Sue Lewin for. I don't know. He had one model, Sue Lewin. Yes, sir. Well, he moved, yeah. She was in the studio and he moved out of the house and moved in with the model. Thing. <laughs> but she posed for the boys, she posed for the children, she posed for the men, she posed for everything. Hmm. It must have been a great model. Yeah. A <laughs> fantasy world, yeah. I have an artist like. Yeah, she's a woman. They turn her into and but of course the very stylized people. Yeah, the mm. parish. When she disappeared, did that when he started painting the landscapes? I mean did she disappear or die and then no, that's no, when he started she, she, painting landscapes? Somebody interviewed her a few years back, that's book yeah. out on her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, it seems 
like the modest lady from the man. Yeah, and nobody knows actually what went on, but he ended up living with her. So. Highly suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs>